Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org, and in this video I'm going to be introducing and installing Ansible Tower. So what is Ansible Tower? Well, it is a front end and kind of a centralized all-in-one location for your Ansible activities. Uh, so it, it's basically a web application and also a database where a lot of the information that you do in Ansible can be stored. So it, uh, this is what we're looking at here. This is just my uh, other install of Ansible Tower. So what we'll do later in the video is just do a quick install of a separate device and uh, just uh, see a couple gotchas there. But basically, this is it. It's a front end for Ansible. So if you're familiar with Ansible, it is all command line which is fine, but some things uh, just by the virtue of that makes it a little bit more maybe involved or more difficult or more complex to do. Uh, for example, logging and uh, audit logging, who is doing what, what's happening with your uh, playbooks when they run, you know, is there a problem with it? Sometimes there's like a soft fail in your playbooks and maybe you don't really know what happened uh, because you're not tracking those logs, things like that. Uh, authentication and credentials, it kind of, uh, it does a pretty good job there too, like it manages them and uh, provides them and makes them available for your playbooks uh, from a variety of, of sources and, and vaults, uh, CyberArk, you know, HashiCorp uh, Vault, I think those are available kind of plugins for that. And uh, and another good thing is where we have, so this is just a simple uh, job templates. So that's the playbooks basically that they're referring to here. So this update.yaml that I have, this is from a GitHub repository. So you can kind of incorporate version control into your Ansible activities. And that's a, that's a pretty good thing and, and sometimes desirable to have. So. Basically, just think of Ansible Tower as a nice, polished, put together front end. And, uh, and if that is, if you do a lot of Ansible, probably the more that you do, the more useful this will be. Just think about it that way. So, as you can see here, it's a Red Hat product. And let me get to the main page here. So, what I'm going to be installing is the Red Hat. Uh, they call it trial version, but it's a full version. And what that's just what that means is that it costs money. It's not open source. It's not free. And I'm talking specifically about Ansible Tower here. This is not free. Uh, I think it's it's like uh, I don't know, ten thousand dollars a year or something, some kind of, and that might change. Uh, so it depends whether it's worth it for your organization if you do a lot of uh, Ansible automation than it might be, or it might not, depending on budgets and things like that. So one thing to know about the Ansible Tower install and like licensing like that is if you have a Red Hat developer subscription, which is free, then you can get a, you can use Red Hat Ansible Tower for your, well, they say up to, they say 16 nodes, but really you have your main controller server on one node and you can control 15 other nodes. So that's why I'm using Ansible Tower because basically I'm going to be just rebuilding my home lab via these Ansible playbooks and I'm not, I'm probably not going to have more than 15 nodes. So that's what I'm going to, uh, that's why I'm using Ansible Tower. An alternative, if you don't want to spend the money for that, and but you do want to expand it beyond that, is they have this AWX project, and you can just get it. Go to GitHub. Uh, I'll put a link with this below. Ansible, AWX, and this is the open sourced version. So I think it's a little bit more involved to install this one, but it should be kind of a like for like copy of what you're going to see me do here. Maybe not on the install because I think that I think it is more involved here. But there's a guide and all that stuff, so just go ahead and uh, check that out if you wanted to. So let's get to installing Ansible Tower. Uh, first thing you'll need is just the uh, link to download it from, 
And you can get that from, I'll put this link down in the bottom too, uh, releases.ansible.com. I'm just using the one that they gave me. I think it was like a month or two ago. I'm not sure. Might have been, so it might be older. These issues might not be uh, the same, but there's really not many issues in the first place. Uh, so this should be pretty similar to uh, what you can get right now. Okay. And just uh, one other thing is my experience is for this quick install, it's, uh, for example, they say, you know, use, you know, four gigs of RAM is a kind of a good, good uh, plan to have for, for this. And uh, 150 gigs, if you uh, recommend it, if you're using an integrated database. So there's a Postgres backend for this that's going to install as well. And uh, so what they tell you is, well, Postgres must be already installed and required. Well, it, it's not. Uh, it will install it in the install itself. So just, you know, little things like that. Ansible too. Ansible will also be installed. So just be aware that you don't have to have all of these things. Not that it will hurt you if you do. Uh, so just uh, sometimes the documentation and requirements are taken a little bit, uh, show up a little bit differently. Okay. With all that said, let's just get to it and just uh, just install and see how that goes. There's just one thing I wanted to show with the install, uh, which is basically why I'm doing this, and uh, just to kind of give a basic basic rundown of, of Ansible Tower itself. So first thing we're going to do is just tar. Let that go. And we're just extracting that so when that... Uh, finishes, Ansible, two things you have, what is that? Okay, I guess that's, uh... all right, so one thing here, inventory, you need to change that and add in passwords. So let's do that. And what you need to do is password here. Obviously, don't put password, but this is just my demonstration. This is the web application, and the name that you use to log into the web app is admin. And then just put in a Postgres password. Again, not password. And uh, that's it. That's all you need for that. So one thing I found is they have these, it's something called pre-flight checks. And... I have this VM provision with four gigs of RAM, but apparently it doesn't show as four gigs of RAM. So when I run the setup script the first time, I get this pre-flight check fail uh, does not have sufficient RAM to run Ansible Tower. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing right now is changing that pre-flight check requirement. And uh, like I said, maybe maybe you need to do this, maybe you do not, but just be aware if you get that pre-flight and a RAM, uh, you know, insufficient RAM message, this is what you can use to fix it. So here we need to go to roles and preflight defaults. And there is a YAML file there. So let's just change that. And right there you see required RAM 3750. I'm just going to say 2048 once I hit I. There you go. 2048. That's it. That should be good to go. Now, we should be, like I said, we should just be good to go. And let's get back to the main, main Ansible directory, but this is where it's going to be. I'll put this in the notes uh, below the video as well, if you need to change this RAM pre-flight check. So, all right. And what we need to do now is just run this uh, setup.sh as sudo, or well, use sudo to run as administrator to run the script. So we'll do that. And you'll see what it's going to do first is it's going to install Ansible. And, uh, and then it's going to run the, uh, run the playbooks, well, the playbook to install it. So we will just, uh, I just want to let you see that the playbook is starting and then I'll pause the video because it takes about 10 minutes. So 
this takes a good long time and if you're looking at it just walk away because it might not be frozen or broken it might just be taking a while so that's with the verbosity uh, of the playbook it's just standard so it's not as verbose and that's just with any Ansible playbook you can run and increase the verbosity level and the more verbose it is the more you see what's happening if it's just a regular standard thing you see these things but you see how long it's how it's taking a little bit of time here it's doing stuff but you don't really see what it's doing so just uh, if you see that and it's starting to just making sure just let it go and uh, I'm gonna do that right now and we'll come back to it in a couple minutes all right, and we are finished with the install here. And let's just, AWX uh, is the host name. So let's just go to it and see. And that is working. I'm sure you can do some type of certificate thing in there as well. Okay, and just to show you this screen when you first log in, uh, they're going to be asking for how do you want to basically use this uh, with your Red Hat subscription. So if you have that Red Hat developer account, which is free, you can put in your information there. Uh, and then some other ways, request subscription. And I think what that will do is maybe start a timer, like a 60-day timer. I'm not 100% sure on that. But anyway, uh, that's it. That's what we have. And like I said, that will... You'll just install Ansible Tower like what I have here. Uh, and I already talked a little bit about it. It kind of centralizes things, which might or might not be useful, depending on your use of Ansible. Uh, it helps a little bit with credentials. It helps with logging. kind of keeps everything organized and in one spot. And uh, like I said, with the Red Hat Developer subscription, it's free for basically 16 nodes like, uh, you know, your uh, managing server and then 15 others. So if you have small deployments, it's not too bad of a thing. And if you don't want to do that, maybe take a look at the AWX project on GitHub and just see about using the open source version of it as well. And I'll put in some notes at the bottom of the video for this. But really, that's all I had. So stay tuned for future videos.